to the eighth week of the Lee Blankenship Coaching Show. I'm your host, Brody Feldman. Alongside me, head football coach Lee Blankenship. Coach, how you doing? Brody, I'm great, man. It's it's good to be back on with you. We've we've missed a couple of weeks there with the weather and and uh, all the ice and school being out. So it's good to good to be back on with you this week. It's always a great time to sit here and talk some football. With Absolutely. You, coach. So, I have to ask, when was the last time, or if ever, have you coached a high school football game that took three hours and had to combine 33 penalties yep. for 215 yards? 33 penalties. Um, that's a that's a lot of football. That's a lot of football penalties and a, and a lot of uh, of uh, times that that ball is moving the wrong direction. Um, I don't know if I've ever coached in a game with that many penalties. Uh, I've coached in a couple of long ones. Uh, you know, if teams want to throw it, and, and uh, at the end of the day, when we get behind like we did and are having to throw the football and try to catch up and get out of bounds and, and uh, you know, play the, the, the entire second half like it's – a minute left in the game and and uh, every second matters and that's what that's what makes that game so long and I played in a couple of those um, over the years but but uh, boy the, the penalties in the game were, were uh, something else. I I didn't get to be in attendance uh, yep. so I was listening to our great radio uh, play-by-play guy Chris Needham on 99.7 Hank FM and it was literally like we would run a play there's a penalty on the field. Yeah, it's like okay, we <laughs> we've got to stop this. Chris, um, l- let me give Chris a shout out as well. He does such a great job, and uh, really, you know, and listen, I've listened to, back to, to some of his play by plays and of the game, and and man, he does such a good job of just putting the viewer there. You know, you feel like you're you're you can see the game in your mind going on as he describes it, and and uh, yeah, there there were a lot of penalties, and and a lot of those were on us, and and. Uh, you know, listen. When you when you have penalties like that, um, you, it's gonna it's gonna get you beat. We we did some good things in that football game, um, and then those penalties ended up at the end of the day getting us beat. So, Broncos put up an impressive comeback, <laughs> fell short in the end yeah. to Putnam City. It was a 47-44 loss. But what can you say about the fight from the team to even get in that position to have a chance to win? Sure. The game? You know, our, our kids just. Our kids are playing the next play. That's something that we we talk about every year. We talk about early in the year how um, you know we've got to be able to overcome when something bad happens. We had a lot bad happen throughout the course of the game, and and especially there in that first half. And um, I was proud of our guys. They they never quit. They fought the entire game. We had we had some injuries, um, and the next guy came in and 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 just picked up the torch and continued to play hard. Our kids' effort was great um, throughout the, the course of the night. Um, you know, at the end of the day, it, it goes back to that first question, man. The penalties um, are, are something that we have got to be able to eliminate and overcome and, and uh, get better at as we move forward. After a loss like that, that many penalties, yeah. that long of a game with that many stoppages where it seems like you can't get in that groove, You, it's like – it's choppy almost. There's, yeah. there's no groove to get in. What do you tell your team at the end of a game like that? Is it one of those that you say, guys, we put this one behind us, we move ahead? Or is it something you say, let's learn from these few things, and then we can move ahead? You know, Brody, one of the hardest things to do, especially um, for young men and, and, and honestly just as competitors, um, is to not allow – a, a call that you disagree with or something that goes wrong, a little trash talk here and there to affect you. We tell our kids every single day, attitude and effort is what you can control. You can't control if the official makes a call you disagree with. You can't control uh, if the guy across from you talks a little trash. You can't control if coach uh, yelled at you or coached you hard. Or, or uh, you know, there are so many things in life, and that goes way past football. That's a lesson for life. Uh, there's so many things that you can't control. But what you can control is the attitude that you have in that situation and the effort that you give moving forward. Um, that's a tough lesson. Our message to our kids on um, after the game was was simply that. When, when things don't go our way, we've got to focus on what we can control, and that's having a great attitude in that situation and giving our best effort. At times, um, as, a, as, a, as a team, we, we looked and thought, man, things aren't going our way. We're not getting the calls. And, and that takes, that takes our, our eyes off of what our, our, our plan is or our goal is, and that's on offense, get a first down. On defense, make a tackle, get a stop. 
And uh, so that was the message. We, we're never going to, um, we're, we're never after a game not going to use that opportunity, whether it's a win or a loss. There's always a teachable moment for our kids, things that we can uh, hopefully instill in them and teach them about the game of football, but more importantly, uh, lessons that we can teach about life. And that's something that um, is, a, is a major lifelong lesson. And, and we took that opportunity on, on, uh, on Saturday after the game to, to really focus on, on that. Well, we're going to take our halftime here on the Lee Blankship Coaches Show. Coach is going to give me a couple of lessons on how to uh, make this a better show as a host. And <laughs> we'll be right back. At Raising Cane's, we're all about quality. We mix cane sauce in our restaurants every day. And our chicken is hand battered and cooked to order. And why do we do all this? Because it makes a difference. Raising Cane's Chicken Fingers, one love. <laughs> Hey Oklahoma, it's barbecue time and Swadley's is now serving world famous steaks. Come on by and see us today or order online at swadleys.com. We're Swadley's world famous barbecue where faith and families come together. Welcome back to the second half of the Lee Blankship Coaches Show. Coach, let's take a look ahead to this week. Your opponent is more Lions. And then at the end of the show, we'll even go a little further than that and take a short little peek into the playoffs. Yeah. Uh, but first, if you look at Moore's record of 2-7, and seven, you might think that this is a team that just isn't competitive. And I looked into their schedule a little deeper to see are they competitive – or is this a team that's in a rebuild mode, or, or what is it, you know? But looking at their schedule, this is a team that is – they have played a lot of close games. No question. You know, when you look in the year 2020 with with COVID and virtual school and in some, some places uh, doing in-person instruction – and the quarantine rules. When it, when you look at a team's record, you've got to look at that with a grain of salt because you have you have really no idea. Even us looking at their record and looking at them on film, we see some different kids, you know, in the game and in, in different games and and guys moving around. But <clears throat> records this year, you know, is it can really lie to you when you know when you have teams that play missing key players because they're in quarantine, and then the next week they may be back, but they might be you know they might have another kid out. It's just been a a really difficult and strange year. Um, so, so records will lie to you this year without question. Um, you know, as, as we look at more, we see a lot of youth. I, from, from what we can tell, they've struggled with some injuries um, early in the season. And it's not a whole lot different than, than here at Mustang. We had some key injuries coming into the season in fall camp. Um, and, and those things, at, we've got some, some sophomores, some young kids, just like they do. They've got a sophomore quarterback like we do. They've got sophomores in the secondary like we do. Um, they, they're, they're very good uh, in the box. They have a really solid defensive line, good linebacking uh, core. Um, but there's a lot of young guys there. And it's really been impressive. Uh, Coach Brad Hill and his staff do such a good job there because you can see the growth in that team throughout the course of the year. They've lost some games. They've lost some close ones. Um, they've had to play without some some guys at times. And uh, so, no, this this is a team that uh, finished uh, as, a, as a playoff team a year ago, beat the number one uh, rated, their number one seed from the other district uh, to go to the semifinals last year and then play for a chance to go to a state title. So um, this is a, a more line team that's that that's well coached and and a team that we certainly are are looking at and think it should be a, a very competitive game and and uh, they definitely have uh, have potential to to uh, to show up and, and beat us. And this is always one of those games between Mustang and Moore. Something all something crazy just seems to always happen. <laughs> I know the last few years covering it uh, for the newspaper here in town is just like, when is that crazy moment going to happen? Yeah. So, but this week, how have the Broncos gotten like you always say that ten percent better? You know, I I really feel like um, on Monday at practice, man, it was maybe the best practice we've had this year. And uh, our kids were flying around. Um, just, just sometimes a 
a loss, um, especially a loss like we took on Friday. Um, honestly, well, I, I think every one of our kids, um, it hurt. <laughs> you know, we had tears in our eyes, and and coaches that losing a game like that, the way that we did, um, knowing that that we, you know, going into the game, we we were probably and should have been favored to win the game, um, and then and then losing in in the fashion that we did was was really difficult, really tough um, for our kids. It's it's never. Um, I, I I believe that I truly believe, you know, as a, as coaches, we're not using kids to win games. It's not about using kids to win games. It's using games to win in the hearts of our kids. Um, we we really believe what we say we believe about that. But 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 even so, when you get beat, when you lose it's difficult it's tough on the on the heart and and on the soul and we put so much into this as coaches and and our players and and uh so that 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 hurt i i'm so proud of just the tenacity of our kids and and the buy-in that they have the belief that they have in in the message um in in what we're trying to build inside of our program for them to be able to come back 6 45 a.m on on uh monday morning you know after a tough loss and every one of our kids are there ready to learn ready to grow uh looking at the scouting report for for more that afternoon in practice we worked them hard we 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 went back to a really heavy individual um uh periods or uh, yesterday where we really went back and and just harped on the fundamentals tackling fundamentals pursuit fundamentals on the defensive side blocking fundamentals on the offensive side, taking care of the football. We had a turnover in the game that hurt us uh, on the offensive side of the ball. Um, and our kids just responded. There was the, the, the energy level, the enthusiasm was as high as it's been. And uh, our kids will be ready to play on, on Friday night. There's, there's no doubt in my mind about that. Proud of them. <laughs> Absolutely. Always proud of the Mustang Broncos. Absolutely. A tough loss on Saturday afternoon puts us in a, a tight situation this Friday against Moore yeah. when you look at the playoff. Uh, a win, and the Broncos host a playoff game. Against who? We don't know yet. Right. A loss more than likely puts us on the road to also more than likely a pretty familiar foe yeah. in the UConn Millers. Can you explain the new playoff rules for this season for our viewers? <laughs> no. <laughs> I can't. I'll, I'll give it my best shot. The playoff system is, is crazy this year, obviously with COVID and, and you know, the OSSAA. I, I know um, uh, there's mixed reviews about their decision to put everyone in the playoffs. At, at the end of the day, um, for me, you know, I, I look and, and we have kids on our team that have, that have played, um, you know, six ball games this year. Um, and had to sit out of, of others and, and seniors on our team. So I, I honestly, just from, from that point of view, allowing our seniors, allowing our kids to have opportunities to play, um, I'm, I'm for that. Um, there, the voting system that, that's, that was put in place makes it, makes it tough to understand, even know who you're going to play in the first round. It'll go all the way to week 10. Um, if we win Friday, we should finish in the district as fourth. Our district the coaches in our district, um, you know, from the directive of the OSSAA, voted to uh, on whether to take the win loss record. So if you if you lose a game, you just don't get that win. If you have to, or excuse me, if you have to forfeit a game, or if a team cancels on you because of they had COVID and and it's you know of no fault of your own, you could choose to 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 go that route and just whoever has the most wins is gonna is gonna be district champion and and so on and uh, all the way down. The district opposite of us chose that route. So it appears that Edmund Santa Fe is going to win the district. Um, and, and it looks like Jinx will be second, Broken Arrow third. Um, I think UConn will probably be fourth. We, now there's still a game to play on Friday night in week 10, so that could, that could get shaken up a little bit. In our district, our coaches voted or, or chose to, to um, use the ranking process to decide the district. So for the last two weeks, we've voted on or we've ranked the teams inside of our district. So after week 10, um, all the coaches will go and they'll rank again. The OSSA will take those three weeks of rankings and average them out. And then that will decide who's first, second, third, fourth, all the way down to eighth. And then it'll go, you know, obviously first place in our district will play eighth place 
and the other district and, and, and all the way, so on and so forth down. So it, it gets really interesting, especially with one district using the ranking system and the other district just using straight wins. Um, you know, that's really, I think Jinx is, is uh, you know, one of the better teams in, in the state of Oklahoma this year, but they're second because a couple of schools um, – uh, had had to forfeit and or it really it's not a forfeit this year if it's quarantine they just the game is null so yeah. there's no winner and no loser so Edmund Santa Fe actually ended up having more wins in the district than Jinx did so that that's why it looks like they're going to be first so it's really interesting it really shook the bracket up uh, so we'll see we'll see what happens that's not a great explanation I know but um, to be honest we're not sure who we're going to play um, in the first round and and uh, whether it'll be at home or away but uh, even if we do win this week but what we do know is that we're focused on winning today winning tomorrow when we get to Friday trying to uh, to be the very best that we can be on that day and and then after that if we've done that we'll we'll play whoever whenever man <laughs> that's one of those things that hold on <clears throat> pull this from here bring this one over it yeah now just erase everything it's, it's <laughs> It'll all play itself out. If, if you want my prediction, I mean, I, I can give you that. If, we, if we're if we able to beat more, then most likely we'll play Westmore at home. That's my prediction. That doesn't mean that if we do beat more, that will happen. Um, if we um, if we do not beat more, we could potentially go to UConn or even potentially go to a Jinx, depending on the ranking system. I mean, it could get really, really messy if we, if we don't take care of business this week and, and beat more. And if we had hours to talk, we could dive into 6A2 and really see some problems. But that's going to be it for us here on week eight of the Lee Blankenship Coaches Show. I'm your host, Brody Feldman. Coach, great. thanks for being here. Great to be here, Brody. Appreciate everything that you do. I need to give you a shout out too, man. You do such a great job with the show. And, and it's always a pleasure and an honor for me to come on and, and get to talk some Mustang football with you. And, and uh, appreciate everything that you do. I appreciate that, Coach. And as always, go, go Broncos. Broncos.